My dear brothers and sisters, I want to take this opportunity again to welcome all of you to this session. And today I'm privileged actually to uh, see or invite you to check on the how the, <clears throat> the, the Washington DC Temple Open House really went through and how the reaction of the guests that were, were invited, what exactly, what was the impression. And it is so interesting that uh, there were quite a number of very interesting uh, uh, impressions that were given by, by, you know, other leaders of other churches. And, uh, and it was wonderful and very, very practical and, and, and great. And uh, without further ado, let me just uh, invite you so that we can actually uh, take a tour uh, to the Washington, D.C. temple. It is one of the most magnificent building I've ever seen. And this is just from, from the video I'm seeing. It's one of the greatest magnificent building that you can ever have. And uh, please let us just have a look at, have a tour on this. Welcome. If I heard the word welcome once, I heard it a thousand times today. Its prominence has been a source of curiosity for decades. Now, thousands of invited guests from surrounding communities are being welcomed to come and see the Washington, D.C. Temple. I used to drive on the highway and see this big building in the middle of the highway and always wonder what this building was all about. There are very few places that myself as a person who is black, a woman, and a lesbian walks into um, where people, everyone greets me and looks me directly in my eyes and gives me the most sincere welcome. The warmth, the sincerity, the welcome that we received makes you want to stay. I just felt like I was in this place where the Lord was. I could feel the spirit of the Lord surrounding me. I loved the sense that it's really not about the place or the building. The place and the building is there to help us focus on our families and on, on God's presence in our lives and, um, and our sense of community. And uh, we share that, that sensibility in the Jewish tradition as well. Different rooms and their functions seem to resonate with guests such as with the celestial room, regarded as the most sacred space in the temple. The ceilings and the lines make you look up and you can't help but look up over and over and over again. So there's like a, uh, a symbolism there, uh, looking up, looking at God and being in that, in that space. So that really stood out for me. And the ceiling room, where couples and their families are united in this life, and for eternity. Just uh, the incredible sense of the importance of family, the love of family, uh, uh, being there for one another. We stood up in that room and looked in the mirrors and it's just, it, it just, it adds depth to the whole meaning of marriage, yeah. Elder Gong of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles with his wife Susan joined fellow apostle Elder David A. Bednar, his wife, and other senior leaders of the church who shared with guests the purpose of the temple. It's a remarkable privilege to invite all to come and see in the house of the Lord. What a remarkable thing to have so many people from so many different walks of life. As a special witness of Jesus Christ, Elder Gong not only taught, but made every effort to ensure each person who learned about the temple left with a meaningful experience and a better understanding. It's been wonderful to share the temple with people who have a sense of the sacred and the holy and who are looking for places in their lives where they can feel the spirit. Even with the amount of different religious backgrounds, everybody felt welcomed. Everybody felt like we're here for one reason, and that's to serve God. And that's what I, that's how I feel leaving here. Very unique, I think, as an LGBTQ person to feel so loved and welcomed by everyone. That doesn't happen in everyday life. The quiet peacefulness that is obviously so much a part of uh, the temple and and its uh, its architecture and its uh, its design, it exudes uh, a warmth and a calm that uh, I think uh, people need and seek in today's world. I've just had the most wonderful experience to be able to be here with my dear wife Susan and to be able to share our feelings of the deepest things of our hearts with our brothers and sisters, our friends, to share things that matter the most to us.
Wow. That was so wonderful and that is so beautiful. Now if 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 you can see what exactly is happening. I I, I don't know if 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 people see what I'm seeing. You know, you know people see what I'm seeing. You, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. But this is actually great. You know, these are non-members of the church who are actually honest and sincere with their feelings, how they felt when actually, you know, taking a tour in the, in the, in the temple, taking a tour, that feeling only. You know, and these, these are people who, who, who maybe we don't even share beliefs, but they will tell you there is something special about this, this building here. There's something special. Those that have visited, they will tell you uh, there is something special here. You know, how they felt peace and, and, and how they felt welcomed. And indeed, for sure, that is the kingdom of God and that is the house of the Lord where he, he welcomes all of his children. That everybody that visits there, they will just feel at home and they will feel the peace that they so require. You saw different type of people with different backgrounds when they gave out their their feelings and how they felt. Nobody felt discriminated. Nobody felt discriminated. And and, and I think some of these uh, so-called messengers of doom who will say that the church is racist or the church is like this, if the church was racist, will not actually allow people to just come and visit the temple, especially if they are not members. But but listen to these non-members who are from different religions. And these are great people. Others are leaders. They are cardinals of their own, you know, churches and, and, and religions. But listen to what they are saying. It's because of the Spirit of God that actually touched them. And they have that sense of peace that they feel at home. Okay, when they are in the temple, that is actually where the presence of God will be felt. And you can only see, you can hear by their testimonies what they are telling you. Now, if a non-member will feel this way, how about you and I, who are members, that we are going to be partakers of these ordinances? How much more are we actually going to feel? And that is why, my dear brothers and sisters, for those who've never gone to the temple, I'll urge you, please hasten. Hasten, go to the temple. Make sure you receive all your endowments. And if not, you've not sealed your family in the temple, please make sure you go and, and have this sealing experience because it is good for you. The Lord is inviting you to visit the temple. And this is, this is one of the greatest uh, videos and reactions I've ever seen that we non-members will speak about the temple and how they they feel you know how they feel being there and i told you washington dc temple is 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 also one is a piece of art it's a piece of art one of the greatest magnificent building you can ever have in that city this was great Otherwise, thank you very much, my dear brothers and sisters. Looking forward to see you again next time. Thank you very much and always know that I appreciate you and I always love you being here. Thank you and see you next time.